Hey Deepak, we've been having a lot of conversations with customers about Vertex AI networking. Do you think we should do a video series on it? Fabulous idea. Hi everyone, my name is Deepak and I'm joined here by Lauren. We're networking specialists, customer engineers, and today we're going to talk to you about Vertex AI deployment patterns with emphasis on private service connect for Google APIs and private Google access. Let's start with some considerations to think about when approaching networking for Vertex AI. Vertex AI is not just one product, it's more like a suite of 10 plus products. Generative AI is not used as a standalone product. However, it is used in conjunction with multiple Vertex AI and Google Cloud products. With these things said, it's really important to get to know the specific Vertex AI product you are using because each one of them works a little differently. When using Vertex AI, it's a common misunderstanding that you can choose the networking access method. It's actually the case that each Vertex AI product falls into a connectivity pattern. The four access patterns are public internet, private services access, private service connect endpoints, and private Google access, or private service connect for Google APIs. Private services access relies on VPC peering. Private Service Connect endpoints use a single private IP address endpoint in your VPC to provide connectivity. Private Google Access and Private Service Connect for Google APIs are very similar in the most common access method. These access methods are used for products that are API-based. Let's jump into the details. To understand why Private Google Access and Private Service Connect for Google APIs are useful, it's helpful to start with the public internet networking pattern. Without making any changes networking-wise to how this pattern of Vertex AI services are used, they'll automatically connect to the API, which looks something like region-aiplatform.googleapis.com via public IP addresses that are subject to change. When using PSC for Google APIs, a single private internal global IP address is created. There are two options for DNS resolution. However, in both cases, private DNS zones must be created with A records pointing to the PSC endpoint IP address. The first DNS option is to use the default DNS name of region-aiplatform.googleapis.com. The second DNS option is to use the PSC fully qualified domain name region-aiplatform.pscendpointname.p.googleapis.com. Resolution can be done with either of these DNS options over a hybrid connection, as long as the PSC endpoint IP address is advertised as a custom route over the hybrid connection. A PSC endpoint can be used to resolve one or more APIs as long as the DNS is to configure to do so. Using private Google Access is very similar to PSC for Google APIs. However, instead of using a private internal global IP address, a Google provided VIP is used. Private.googleapis.com with the VIP 199.36.153.8/30 is used to resolve all Google Cloud APIs. Restricted.googleapis.com with the VIP 199.36.153.4/30 30 is used to resolve only the Google Cloud APIs that are compliant with VPC service controls. Making some DNS changes that include an A record with the respected VIP and a C name pointing to star.googleapis.com to either of the DNS names will change the resolution to private for Google APIs. Before we jump into a demo, let's discuss some networking considerations when working with Google API-based services. As stated previously, Google API access over the internet requires no networking configuration changes. Google API traffic can be totally restricted in an environment with the use of VPC service controls. For hybrid networking, don't forget to create a custom route advertisement over the hybrid connection for the provided Google VIP with the use of private Google access or the PSC endpoint with the use of PSC for Google APIs. Make sure on-prem or multi-cloud firewall rules are updated to allow traffic to egress to the Google VIPs or the PSC endpoint. PSC endpoints must be created in the same VPC as the cloud router associated with the hybrid connection. 
Lastly, don't forget to update your DNS zones and records. Hello everyone. Let's examine a private service connect Google API's deployment pattern that facilitates private connectivity to Gen AI on Vertex. The first step is to enable the Vertex API in the service project when deployed as a shared VPC. This step allows users to access Google Managed Vertex services. To set up a network infrastructure that allows private access to Vertex AI APIs supported by Private Service Connect, follow these steps. Create a PSC endpoint within the same virtual private cloud as the cloud router. Advertise the PSC IP address as a custom route advertisement from the cloud router. Update on-premises or multi-cloud DNS and or SDKs to resolve the Vertex APIs to the PSC IP address. Finally, update the on-premises or multi-cloud firewalls to permit access to the PSC IP address. The networking stack that we discuss includes support for the APIs described below. In this demonstration, we'll delve into the architecture of a single project that showcases private connectivity to the Gen AI API from an on-premises network invoking a Gen AI language text prompt. The Vertex API is enabled within the project, which empowers us the capability to access and craft a text prompt leveraging generative AI language. The Private Service Connect endpoint is deployed in the Vertex AI networking VPC that provides private termination of Google APIs when using combination with hybrid networking, such as high availability VPN, interconnect, or SD-WAN. In our demonstration, a highly available VPN connection is set up between the Vertex networking VPC and on-prem VPC. This allows the on-prem client to establish private connectivity to the Gen AI language prompt by targeting the Private Service Connect Google API's IP address. It's important to note the PSC endpoint IP address requires a custom route advertisement from the cloud router since this IP address does not reside in the Vertex networking VPC. Instead, the PSC endpoint IP address is a unique slash 32 IP address that should not overlap with the VPC or on-premises subnet. To connect on-premises network with Vertex, you'll need to update your DNS to resolve the Vertex DNS name to your private service connect endpoint IP address. You can achieve this by either creating a forwarding zone specific to the FQDN region-aiplatform.googleapis.com or updating your software stacks SDK pointing to a custom PSC endpoint DNS name. In our demonstration, we'll update the host file on the on-prem client machine to include the DNS name for Vertex and the PSC IP address. This allows the operating system to prioritize a host file resolution for Vertex. Finally, to invoke a generative AI text prompt, a curl will be issued from the on-prem client located in the on-prem VPC. The curl command will contain a payload.json file with the prompt, give me 10 interview questions for the role of program manager. The on-prem client OS will route the curl request and payload to the PSC IP address as a destination IP address located in the Vertex networking VPC. All right, everyone, we've covered a lot of information, so let's move on to the live demo and apply what we've learned. Let's jump into the demo. We have a single project with two VPCs. We have the on-prem VPC that has a single subnet where the on-prem VPC client is deployed. We also have the Vertex networking VPC that contains no subnets. However, the Private Service Connect endpoint will, de will be deployed in this VPC. In the VPN configuration, everything is green. VPN's up and running, BGP's established, and we have two VPN tunnels per VPC. The cloud routers are set for the default configuration, which is advertised all subnets that are visible in the VPC. And you can see here from the on-prem cloud router, we have two HAVPN tunnels 
and CloudNAT that's used for internet egress. From the Vertex Networking Cloud Router, we also have two BGP tunnels and CloudNAT gateway is not defined. There's no internet egress required. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the routes. All right, so let's look at the Vertex Networking VPC. These are the learned dynamic routes that we want to pay attention to. And here we do see the dynamic routes learned. Um, these are the routes that are learned from the on-prem VPC. And there's two of them, right? One per VPN tunnel. And in the on-prem VPC, there's no routes learned because the Vertex Networking VPC doesn't have any subnets defined. Now for the fun part, let's jump into Private Service Connect and create that endpoint in the Vertex Networking VPC. We'll go ahead and give it a endpoint name, PSC Vertex, sounds appropriate. Specify the network, the Vertex Networking VPC, and we'll go ahead and define a static IP address, which consists of the name and the IP address itself. 192.168.0.1, sounds good. Again, this is a totally unique IP address. It doesn't live in the VPC nor on-prem. Everything checks out here. Let's go ahead and add the endpoint. And it's accepted and good, awesome. Okay, now let's get this IP address learned by the on-prem VPC. The way that we do that is we need to update the cloud router, the Vertex Networking Cloud Router, to advertise this IP address as a custom route advertisement. So select the cloud router. We'll go ahead and do create custom routes. Looks good. And now let's go ahead and insert that PSC endpoint IP address here. Yep, it's a slash 32. We'll give it a description so we know what this is. Yep. PSC endpoint. Okay, that, that looks good. Yep, let's go ahead and save it. And we could come back and validate this as well once it's updated. Okay, great. So yeah, it's advertise all subnets, yes. And we'll go ahead and click on custom. IP ranges, and you can see this is the IP address that we just defined, which is the PSC endpoint. Now let's go back to the routes, and we would expect to see this IP address on the on prem VPC side. And it should be a dynamic route. Let's do a refresh real quick. Cool, we see the routes, and there's two of them that are defined here because we have two VPN tunnels. And looks good. So this confirms that now the on-prem VPC sees the PSC endpoint. At this time, let's log into the on-prem client and observe how access to the Vertex API is performed by default through a dig of the Vertex FQDN US-Central1-AI platform.googleapis.com that results in the public IPs used to reach the Vertex API. All right, so those are the public IPs, and let's go ahead and change this behavior by updating the host file. We'll go ahead and insert the API FQDN into that host file. Followed by the PSC endpoint IP address. Again, the reason why we're doing this is that the OS is gonna prioritize the, the host file um, for this FQDN and it'll resolve to the PC endpoint IP. And when it does that, it'll use private connectivity. And we could confirm this as well by performing a ping to the Vertex AI FQDN, which will re return the PC endpoint IP address. All right, so that worked and we went ahead and initiated a TCP dump, a very, Great tool for validation, and we'll come back to use it to monitor the results. But at this time, let's go ahead and move forward. We'll go ahead and create the Gen AI language text prompt. And we'll go ahead and give this prompt a name called interview questions. Sounds about right. 
and we'll go ahead and create the prompt. The prompt is give me 10 interview questions for a program manager. All right, let's go ahead and hit submit. Looks good. We have some really nice responses. Okay, let's go ahead and save the prompt. And then we want to go ahead and look at the different types of code you could use to run this prompt, right? So you have Python, Node.js, Java, and curl. We'll explain curl syntax in depth. By looking at this curl, you can see the first thing is this request.json. This is the actual payload that's sent to the language prompt, right? So this is the prompt that we we've issued earlier, and this is what you're going to be sending when you perform the curl. Um, what's also important here is the different variables that are being set up here, namely the API endpoint. Recall this was the initially the public IP address when you did the, the, the dig, and we changed that behavior by updating the host file with the PSC endpoint IP. So this is another mechanism to validate what APIs are in use and understand how you could change the behavior. And last but not least is the curl command. The most important takeaway from here in this curl command, of course, you have the, the attributes, um, the variables that are being uh, updated. But at the very end, you have the request.json file. And again, that points to the payload, uh, which is actually being sent to GenAI and ultimately getting the response back. All right, so we got the TCP dump up and running. And again, this is the TCP dump against the PAC endpoint IP address. This will validate private connectivity. We don't have any JSON files on the VM now. So we'll go ahead and copy uh, the code block and we'll execute the code from the on-prem client. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and run everything at once. Okay. Oh, you already see the responses. Nice. So let's scroll up a bit. We'll go through this again. And you'll see here the same code block. Okay. So you have the, the file creation, the request.json, uh, the prompt that we provided. Uh, you see the different variables calling the uh, vertex FQDN. You also see the curl command. Now the payload's being read, right? So the payload is the, the text prompt, the 10 interview questions for a program manager. And now you get the responses, right? So this is the, uh, the responses back from GenAI. Really cool. So this proves out that we're able to get a response back, but how do you prove private connectivity? So recall we have the TCP dump running previously. So here in the TCP dump, you could see the source destination, bi-directional communication between the OS, um, the on-prem client, communicating to the Vertex um, networking VPC that contains the PC endpoint IP address, 192.168.0.1, and that connectivity is over HAVPN, hence private connectivity between the on-prem client and the PC endpoint. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. It's been a pleasure. Lauren, back to you. Thanks for that awesome demo, Deepak. For more information about private networking to Vertex AI, check out the links in the description. If you liked this video, give us a thumbs up and let us know if you have any questions in the comments. Stay tuned for more videos covering other Vertex AI networking patterns. Thanks for watching.